Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, Wendy gives you her take on all of the latest sizzling hot topics. And the outrageous actress and comedian Sandra Bernhardt is here. Plus, can you guess the famous face? We're playing our new game, Who's That? Now, here's Wendy! <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody! Thank you for watching. My co-host, my studio audience. I'm doing great. Let's get started. It's time for. Well, tomorrow is the big day. It's the day that we kick off Wendy's spring touching. Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty big deal. I'm gonna be calling Lucky Wendy Watchers live on the air, and if you can correctly answer a question about the show. Now, when I say the show, I'm talking about the show in its entirety. You know, it's not just going to be something in hot topics. I could ask you something like, um, you know, we did audience eye candy. What was our eye candy's winner's name? And then you say, Teresa. And then I say, yeah! Now, now I'm gonna spin the wheel, and whatever it lands on, you win! You can win up to $5,000. Yeah. But the key is to make sure that you pay close attention to the show, okay? So I'm gonna make my first phone call tomorrow, go to my Facebook page to find out how you can enter, and, uh, and, and you'll find it, that out there. <laughs> you know, there are some people who look terrific, whether they are overweight, underweight, or just right. And I've always said one of those people is the dearly departed Anna Nicole Smith. Yeah. Yes. But, but to me, another one of those people is Christina Aguilera. Yeah. Uh, yes. I find Christina Aguilera to be a very attractive, attractive woman, whether she's... Now, now, she's got a nine-month-old, so remember, she had a baby, but I find her to be attractive whether she's, you know, you know, very overweight for her or just right. She's just attractive, you know? But now she's being accused of getting butt implants. Now, before we show... Well, well there it is. Um, okay, look at the picture. Okay, let me just take you through it because I know she's, she's a Latina and, you know, she's always had a little bit of junk in her trunk on her midriff right here. You know, she's, she's that type of girl. However, this is her butt eight weeks ago. And this is her butt now. So what I'm thinking, and I'm not sure about this, is her stomach also looks flatter. Maybe she got a little fat transferred from the front and put into the back. I mean, it looks great. When is the butt revolution going to end so boobs can be back in style? <laughs> I just, um, no, I'm not getting a reduction. I, I, yes, it is very embarrassing, particularly as a woman of color, to have such a flat booty that I do have. <laughs> but, you know, for me, my party's in the front. You can't have a party in the front <laughs> and in the back and be six feet tall <laughs> with a large personality and a giant wig. Something's got to give. <laughs> so... <laughs> Somebody in our morning meeting said, well, maybe those are butt pads. No, 
I don't know whether they're butt pads. Has anybody in the audience ever worn a butt pad? Do you get, well, no, it's okay, it's okay. Um, do they shift? If it stays in place. Do you wear it often? No, I don't wear them anymore when I was, when I was younger. When you were younger. Yeah. See, most of us, I think when we were younger, has anyone in the audience ever stuffed their bra? <laughs> yeah, that, right. So, somewhere around eighth grade, right, girls? <laughs> and we don't know what we're doing. And the bra looks all lumpy. <laughs> you know, we look, look like fools. But um, yeah, I, d clap if you think she got butt implants. <laughs> all these implants, whether they're breast implants or butt implants or whatever, is eventually something's got to give. Like, you can't possibly walk around. You know, my mom turns 80 in a few weeks, and I look at her, and I'm just like, okay. You know. But, you know, she's got to look. You know, you, you start to shrink as an older woman, and then, you, you know, your, 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 your body just changes. When you can't have an 80-year-old presence and 25-year-old and boobs. <laughs> Which is what's going to happen to me, which is why I know I'll get a reduction one day because they're under the muscles, so they're sagging as much as they ever will. Oh. I know. <laughs> they're terrific. But, and so I know that I'll get a reduction and I know that there is breast reduction surgery, although the scars are horrible, but anyway. But once you get older, like when she gets to be 80 like my mom, okay, Osteoporosis sets in. You, you know, you start shrinking. You start, you know, looking 80. But then she's going to have the butt of a 25-year-old. <laughs> uh, like, how does that... Yeah, because the implants, they, they are there. So all these girls walking around with these, uh, you know, big, gigantic behinds. Uh, <laughs> is there such thing as a butt reduction surgery? <laughs> I've never heard of it. I've never heard, I can imagine the scarring would look worse than like getting a breast reduction. Anyway, Extina, we're watching you. No matter what size you are, what you do, we, we like you. <laughs> Told you it wouldn't work. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Still married, but this has about 30 more seconds. Watch, watch. <laughs> Problem is, is that she's 29 years old and he's 51, and she and she at 29 years old, you should know the basic blueprint on how to be a reasonable wife. The, the blueprint. You know, sometimes when you're 21 and you get married and you're still a girl and you don't understand that you, you forsake all others, you can't be, oh my God, you know, <laughs> you know. But Amber is 29 years old. She should know the basic blueprint, except she doesn't. Reportedly, she's getting too close, again, with one of her female friends. Now, you know, Amber is sexually fluid. See, and a lot of times, guys, some of you all are Neanderthals because you love a sexually fluid woman because you feel as though you can jump in the bed with her and her friend. <laughs> except, except, except that doesn't work. Uh, that doesn't work because, you know... Anyway, so here's what happened. This, first of all, this is the friend. She looks aggressive, doesn't she? <laughs> okay, so the friend is a photographer, and Johnny and Amber have been married for two months. They're still supposed to be in their honeymoon period, except Amber still wants to run around town. Like, she still likes to, you know, go to the clubs. And, you know, Johnny should have been smart enough to see this in the beginning. But I guess he was just, you know, overwhelmed by her loveliness or something. In the meantime, the aggressor, what's her name? Io. Io. Okay. <laughs> Io. Io seems to... First of all, Johnny moved Io into a guest house on their property. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, exactly. Now, I don't know that Amber has ever been linked romantically to Io, but Io is a big activist in the gay and lesbian community. And um, so she was living in a house on the property at one point. Then Johnny's surprised that the girls are getting close again. First of all, it's bad enough, talking about sexual fluidness, it's bad enough when you walk in a room, you know, and you're with somebody attractive on your arm, and you're looking to see who else they think they're attractive. So you're looking to the right. But when you're with somebody sexually fluid, you have to look to the right. And to the left, and down here, and up here. Like, honestly, that would, uh, that, that would drive me, like, I couldn't do it. That would drive me absolutely nuts. 
So now, apparently, she doesn't live in the guest house anymore, but what she is doing is posting um, things online, like Io posted a picture and called Amber, my love. Let's see the picture. Okay. In my opinion, I believe Io is directly throwing darts at Johnny Depp, like direct dart throwing at Johnny, you know? Also, um, Io posted a picture of a hotel bed. Let's see the picture. With with the sheets mussy, what'd she say slick under that? It was where Amber was rumored to be staying. Oh, it was where Amber was rumored to be staying. Johnny, you don't even need to make Amber choose. Because if you have to ask your wife of two months, who's a grown woman at 29, to choose between her uh, aggressive friend and you, this is not a marriage. Get, get it annulled. Like, like, honestly, honestly. Get it, get it annulled, go back to the drawing board. Amber needs to grow up. Amber needs to know that, you know, when you, when you take a husband, what that means, uh. And it certainly doesn't mean, uh, well. <laughs> Look, Johnny, I'm sure you'll handle the situation and we will be watching. I can't follow this Miley Cyrus and Patrick Schwarzenegger thing. Like, they're broken up, they're back together, they're broken up, back together. Well, now they're taking a break, is what they call it. Aww. Okay, she's 21. What's so serious in love that you have to take a break? Aren't, aren't, aren't breaks for, like, like, people who, like, have kids and, you know, and, and, the, and the, the, the stresses of life on your shoulder and you're not sure whether you want to stay and you say, let's take a break. Even then, you know what a break means? I don't know how you define a break, but I defined it as strange meat all the time. <laughs> like, I, I could have... I, 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 at 21, you, things shouldn't be so complicated. She's 21. He just graduated from, from, from college. They're taking a break. Um... I think that in a lot of cases when people say we're taking a break, it's because they don't have the guts to say, this didn't work out, it's over. <laughs> There's one person I'm sure that's probably very happy about that, and that is Maria Shriver, who never wanted him to be with Miley anyway. <laughs> but I don't think that Maria should gloat on account of, you know, she's too mature for that. Like, I don't think she, she should go to Patrick and say, mm, I didn't like her anyway. You know what I mean? She's just handle it ladylike. But I just, the whole take a break thing, that's like scary to me. If you're fighting with your man, to sleep in the guest room is one thing. But to take a break after you've been with somebody for, a, you know, five years or ten years or a decade or whatever, I mean, who thinks that means hashtag I'm cheating my off? <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you could still honor the break and maybe get back together, but then who wants you after you've been smutted out for the last month by strange men? We've spent too much time on this story. Let's move on. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson, you know, she's a mom. She married um, some French guy, and they live between America and France. Anyway, that's him. He looks mean, right? <laughs> mm. Anyway, Scarlett says, um, Scarlett um, says that, you know, even though she's a mom and her daughter is seven months old, um, she's not a parenting expert, and she can't stand it when celebrities give parenting advice. really get offended by that. I don't get offended whether you give parenting advice or a celebrity, you know, because ultimately speaking, parenting is such an individual thing. And, you know, honestly speaking, I think celebrities are the worst people to give parenting advice. I'm going to tell you why. Because they're busy talking down at you. In the meantime, they have nannies with drivers and, and cars and, and, and they, just minions of people and kids off in boarding school or whatever they do. They, like, don't give parenting advice to people who have to be parents every 
doggone day. <laughs> Imagine if there were such such thing as taking a break from parenting. Yeah. I think that's called a vacation without the kids. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but I, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind advice from celebrities because it just goes to. It just makes me more firm in what I believe. Like for instance, Alicia Silverstone believes that you know, clueless. Here she is. <laughs> she believes. She believes in chewing the food in her mouth and then spitting it in her child's mouth. <laughs> Like a bird. You remember the scandal was like last year this time. Uh, well, I personally think that's disgusting. It's another crazy parent giving advice that I don't care about, but I'm open to listening because it's interesting to see what other people do in their houses. You know, Maya Bialik believes in that, that family bed. She's a friend to the show. She came here. I'm not talking out of turn. We talked about it, and I think I gave her the same face that I'm giving you now. Like, <laughs> really? Uh, so, um... But with all the kids sleep in the same bed. It's called, what do they call it? Like a parenting? Suzanne, what do they call it? Um, I don't know attachment what. Parent. Attachment parenting. Attachment parenting. Par yeah, attachment. Oh. Atta I attachment parenting. <laughs> do you sleep in the bed with your kids? Yeah. You d I wasn't asking you, oh. but as long as we're talking, go. <laughs> really? I sleep with Pete. He's in a, in a twin bunk bed. Yeah, I hold him. He's so where, does, cute. where does Brendan sleep? Well, Brendan sleeps in the other room <laughs> uh, where Jack sleeps. So, yeah, I know. It's, a, it's an issue. We, we need to fix it. <laughs> so when you want romantic time... Well, in the morning when they're downstairs. <laughs> I mean, no, I, we've discussed this years ago, but I wasn't putting you on the spot. I was actually talking to our co-host, yeah, no, but I guess you feel guilty, so you decided to... I do, I do. Confession I feel... is good for the soul, Suzanne. I'm sweating, I'm sweating. Okay. Uh... Anyway, um, Maya Bialik, you know, she's got the, the, the bed with all the kids, and, it's, it, it, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow only wants to feed her kids, like, stuff from that's gluten-free and from her garden, and, and, and some of us... We leave our kids alone being watched by a dog when the kid's only 10 years old. No, do you know what I mean? It's just interesting. I don't get offended by it. I'm not as uptight as Scarlett Johansson, but I guess because the baby's only seven months, so she's still hormonal, you know, and, and just saying anything. You remember how that was? Anyway, um, is she morphing into her ex, Johnny Depp's ex, um, Robin Wright Penn? Sean Penn? Sean, I'm sorry. Okay. Scarlett Johansson used to date Sean Penn. And Sean Penn has a type. He likes a blonde with little hair. <laughs> you know, he was married to Robin Wright Penn, and now he's involved with Charlize Theron, who's a blonde woman with little hair. And so, it, it, so he's got a type. Interesting. Yeah. I think she looks better with more hair, though, but that's just me. All right, she didn't ask me for hair advice, so let's move on. <laughs> Do you watch R&B Divas LA? Yeah! I know you guys can't wait for the reunion. Yeah! Guess who's hosting? Um, is the reunion and the new diva on the show, Stacy. This is Stacy right here. She's from Brooklyn. And um, Stacy wanted to clear up an old rumor about an alleged fight that she had with Whitney Houston. And it's our hot clip of the day. Roll it! <laughs> the word on the blog is that two days before Whitney Houston passed away, yeah. Kelly Price had a Grammy party. And you and, and Whitney how and a lot of these ladies, else. Percent, wait, and a lot of the girls no, you were, embellished th and you were there and Ray J was there. Tell the rest of the story. Tell it. So, so you lady, can get closure. Yes, just, we can get, this is the, this is the place. Okay. Well, I've known Ray and I've known Brandy. Brandy was 14, so however old Ray was. That was her boyfriend at the time. Yes. She didn't know who I was to him. 
So she just was curious about that relationship, I guess. Because it was a loud club, you know, you're talking to someone, you just don't know what that dynamic is. And I guess she thought you were trying to push up. Yes, okay. and I wasn't. And that was all it was. That was the end of it. Really. And so she did not slap you? No, I did not get slapped by Whitney Houston, Chrisette Michelle. That was a very long day. There was a lot of drama and shade being thrown left and right. It's two parts. Now, part one of R&B Divas LA runs, uh, returns, or the reunion um, airs tonight at 10 on TV One. And uh, keep clapping, everybody. We've got more great show for you. The fabulous Sandra Bernhardt is here. I've got a lot to talk to Sandra about, but up next, it's time for Celebrity Fan Out. So grab a snack and what? Come on back. Kicking off a big month on Wendy with Monique. The controversies. What's next? The real talk you only get here. And People Magazine unveils the most beautiful people in the world. Plus, our Spring to Change giveaway begins. Let's get it started. Tomorrow on an all-new Wendy. Fan out. Let's get started. Our first celebrity fan out comes from Mike D, who watches the Wendy Show on WSVN in Miami, Florida. Mike writes, "How you doing, Wendy? I was doing volunteer work in Africa and was shocked when I ran into Charlize Theron. <laughs> well, you know she's South African." And um, he says, I spoke to her in her native language, which is Afrikaans. She was so impressed that she insisted we take a picture. <laughs> Charlize, by the way, is currently on the cover of W Magazine, looking beautiful. Uh -huh. Our next celebrity fan out comes from Jessica G, who watches The Wendy Show on WNYW in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And Jessica writes, how you doing? I took my niece to a concert where she got to meet her favorite rapper. It was Drake. Wow. How does that happen? Oh my gosh, your niece's hair is so perfect, it looks like one of my wigs. It's beautiful. Anyway, um, she says, I take her to each and every concert he plays in the area, and meeting him was like a dream come true for her. I'm sure, I'm sure. Our next celebrity fan out comes from Brandon D, who watches The Wendy Show on KTTV in Temecula, California. Brand, uh, Brandon writes, Hi, Wendy. How you doing? <laughs> I was at Coachella this weekend and ran into a legend. It was David Hasselhoff. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon says, he was very kind to me and I could tell he was having a great time. By the way, you know, David Hasselhoff is playing Ian Deering's father in Sharknado 3. Oh, hell no. <laughs> so, a <laughs> little fun fact boy. This is our final one, so savor it. Um, our final celebrity fan out comes from Dana L, who watches The Wendy Show on WNYW here in New York City. And, and <laughs> Dana writes, hey, Wendy, I was on my way to class and I was early for the first time. <laughs> so I walked into Starbucks and saw Bruce. I'm so shocked that Bruce is taking pictures. I mean, I know he's a kind man, but you know what? I gotta tell you something, Dana. Hold on to this picture, because in a matter of time, <laughs> it's gonna be worth a lot of money. I mean, you can see he's already started the process. His hair is pulled over to the side. He's got a little something growing on it. What is that on your lip, Bruce? Um, anyway, um, yeah, so, and I also heard that he might be calling himself Belinda, but we'll have to find out when he gets, no, Diane Sawyer's gonna break it down for us on Friday at nine o'clock on ABC. Thank you, Dana, this is a good one. I love celebrity fan out. If you've ever had an encounter with a celebrity and you wanna share with us, go to wendyshow.com, find out the details, and we'll put you on the TV. <laughs> Up next, everyone, the one and only Sandra Bernhardt is here.
Yes, because she always says it like she means it. She's been here several times, and she's always a ball of fun. Currently, she's guest starring on the hit CBS sitcom Two Broke Girls. Let's watch. <laughs> Actually, Joe, silent DTH, I can bake. But how well? My girlfriend and I are obsessed with French pastry. Oh, girlfriend as in girlfriend? <laughs> or as in two ladies of a certain age at a Cineplex splitting one thing of popcorn? Everything you just said offended me. <laughs> yeah, that's my brand. <laughs> Please welcome the fabulous Sandra Bernhard. Seasons are changing when I show up in a Dion von Furstenberg maxi dress. <laughs> and uh, newly blonde hair. I've never seen you as a blonde. What? You know what? It's just because I need highlights and lowlights, and so it's, just, it's fading into blonde. Yes, yes. Because it was red. <laughs> now, now, how is Cicely? She's amazing. How old is she now? She's almost 17. And what's she Junior. Junior, it's junior in junior, high school, junior. honey. Oh, my God. The SATs. The prep, the nerves, the emotions, yes. the highs, the lows, the hormones. The... Does she want? Does she want to stay here and like go to NYU, or does she want to go to? No, BU she wants to go to a very small liberal arts college on the East Coast. Yes, she's like a she's a she's a Cancerian. She likes to be with her people. I'm a Cancerian oh, also. July 18th. When's her birthday? July 4th. Yeah. Wow. What a party you I had know. that day. Oh, believe me, <laughs> it's a long story. So, two broke girls. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. you know, you know, um, you've already done three episodes. How many more do you do? There's two more. Two more. Two more coming up. I did five this season. We'll see if they bring me back. They should. <laughs> this is what I like about you. Michael Patrick King wrote the part for me. He is a doll. The two girls, Kat and Beth, are off the charts. They're the sweetest girls yes. on the face of the, the entire cast. Is wonderful. Where do they film that? In LA. Oh. It's supposed to be Brooklyn, but we shot it in LA. In LA. <laughs> um, so we know you from, you know, uh, Roseanne. Of course. You know, being funny. <laughs> would you, um. Timeless. Would you, uh, would you love to do a sitcom on a full time Sign basis? me up. You got an idea? Got it. Got it. No. You're gonna no. produce it for me? No, but you know what? You put it out there and, uh, like, I'm, I'm shocked. You are funny in a deadpan kind of say it like you mean it. Like, I love your sense it's, of well, humor. It's coming back around again, you know, because I did three episodes also of Brooklyn Nine-Nine yeah. this season. Uh -huh. So I think that people are coming back around. Yeah. Chickens are coming home to roost. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, were you, were you watching Hot Topics? Of course I was. Okay, I just wanted to talk to you about um, um, Sandra, um, not Sandra, um, Don't worry. Johnny Depp jo yeah. and uh, Amber Heard. Yes. Now, first of all, are you lesbian purist? Have you ever been with a man? Oh, of course I am. I consider myself to be bisexual. Really? <laughs> I mean, I've been, I've been with my lady for a long time, but and, you know, I dated men over the years. Yes. I had a relationship with men. Do, is it complicated when a person deals with a bisexual, like Johnny Depp and Amber? Well, I thought he was a lesbian. <laughs> oh, never mind. Never. But they've been married for two months. You heard me tell the story. I and... know, I know. It's absurd. And that other little person, that's that's her girlfriend? No, that, that doesn't say girlfriend, but it seems as though she's a, a problem. Well, that's what I'm saying. And she, lo she doesn't look that different than Johnny Depp. I mean, you know, it's a... That's, Johnny Depp looks very feminine, and she looks as they meet somewhere in between. The bottom line is, they're married, so it's really, all bets are off. Amber is either with him or she's a free spirit, which is fine. No, it's not a problem. When you're with somebody and you're dating somebody and you love somebody, that's who you're with. Oh, I'm so complicated. Just, uh, just, it's, it's just complicated. Unless you have an open relationship and that's the cards are on the table and you're allowed to but to me that's just like why bother Who, it's too much effort yeah it is a lot, lot of effort i don't want to be drained by more than one person i didn't know that you were bisexual though or maybe i did because i've known you for a we've long time we've talked we've about talked it. about it <clears throat> who's your type who's famous who's my type like who's the rock famous we, we, wait a minute there is somebody well i mean I think Jeff Goldblum is sexy. No, I'll tell you who I think. I'll tell you who I think is super sexy is Liam Neeson. Oh, yeah. And he's tall 
and he's got body. I once sat on his lap at a um, Esquire, you know, magazine right. party. This is way, way back in the day. I said, ooh, he's hot. Yes, he is. Yes, I like a, I like a man. I like a manly man. Yes. And I like a beautiful, sexy woman. Yes. yes. Well, who's your type who's famous that we know? Oh, I think Angelina Jolie would be. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't want to belabor your history with Madonna, but we know. But we will. But well, <laughs> but why not? But well, we get new watchers every day, so maybe no, no, some no, people watching I, never heard yeah, of you. No, about. Yeah, nobody knows that we were friends in 1988. But that's oh, you that's guys. Point. You guys were besties at one point. You're not friends yeah. anymore. That's not what I want to talk about. No, of course I want it's not. I want to ask you about. <laughs> no, like, no, but no. I mean that. And I know you wouldn't go back to tired, played out no. situations. No, no. I want to talk about the kiss with Drake. Yes. Like, is that a? Is, is, I, and you, you can't even get it out. Well, Honey, you're very provocative. It's so funky. I'm provocative, I hopefully in an intelligent way, where it's layered and I want to talk about things that matter and right. culture. That, honey, was too much for my nerves. That's saying a lot. I don't... I don't like kissing strangers. Do I don't like the breath, the, the, the saliva, the gum disease. I don't want to know about it. It makes me sick. To me, and we were talking about this when it first happened on Hot Topics a few uh, days ago, and I was saying just, you know, she doesn't have to, and we've talked about it several times, no, doesn't she doesn't have to be this desperate anymore. I She's Madonna, I damn I mean, it. it's just like, lay back, relax, go sit on an island, enjoy your children, live your life. I mean, I, I just feel like at this point, you know, we can, listen, you can take it to the bitter end, you know, and you're never going to get enough. It's like a, a, like a well that just can't get filled. Is but, she... you know, you've got to be happy with your day-to-day. -day. And, you know, when you have that kind of money... Honey, if I had that kind of money... Oh, no, I'd be like, uh-uh, I'm done. Okay, well, well you would I say that. I am so done. But, there, but there's, so many, there's so many people who have money, but they crave that attention. Now, you know her better than we do. Is she a t an attention seeker in real life? I think, I think just emotionally, certain people need constant attention. Uh, yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a, a deficiency. I wouldn't criticize it. I wouldn't judge it. But it's a reality, and I think that you've got to work through that in your life gotcha. as you mature. And okay. just let it go. Uh, one more thing. Are you going to be Who watching... Dr. Phil? Uh, no, I, no, I love when you come here. You always have something very smart to say. Now, are you going to be watching Bruce and Diane Sawyer with a snack on Friday? I'm not. I'm not going to watch You're it. You're not? No, because I have a lot of empathy for Bruce. And I feel like I don't want to be like... I don't want to look in on it. You know what I mean? It's like... It's, it's his life. He's gotten caught up with the Kardashians. It's a circus. It's a media frenzy. And so I, I just respect him, her, for whatever she, he is going through. Uh, do you think it should not be played out on reality TV? Well, no. I don't, I don't think any of this should be played out. I don't think it's based on talent. I don't think it's based on, on saying something that's earth-shattering. I think especially this, it's, I think he's just got, trying to... He's used to it now. It's like a drug. Yeah. All right, so one more thing. You have a new show called Hashtag Blessed. What's, the, what's going on? It's my one-woman show, but it's, it addresses all of the, you know, social media, over the top. Nice. You know, grateful. Hashtag grateful. Hashtag blessed. Because over the silliest things, we're, we're really happy about it. And it's like, really keep that for the special things in life. So yeah. that's just sort of a funny commentary on that. But I will be in San Francisco on May 1st at the Regency Ballroom. And I'll be in Olympia, Washington on May 2nd, and I'll be actually be in New Orleans at the Joy Theater on June 20th. Terrific! <laughs> Always a pleasure to see you. Back, honey. Sandra Bernhardt, everybody. Two Broke Girls airs Monday nights at 8 on CBS. Ask Wendy is next. And so are the hot topics. And you won't believe what I'm about to tell you. And from Dancing with the Stars, Suzanne Summers. Plus, our Spring to Ching giveaway continues. Cha Ching! Friday on an all new Wendy. We're putting the Cha Ching in spring. April 23rd through May 20th. I'm calling Lucky Wendy Watchers every day with a question about our show. And then it's a spin to see how much they can win. Watching Wendy could pay off big. Get details on how you can enter for your chance to play on my Facebook page now. Yeah. Welcome back. Everybody have a seat. It's time for Ask Wendy. Except for you. Hello. Hi, Wendy. How are you?
you doing? How you doing? My name is Robin. My question for you is, my ex-husband and I were married for 10 years. Uh -huh. We've been divorced for seven. We're dating for three. It's been great now. Wow. Our daughter wants us to try it a second time. I want to know, should we jump the broom or should we just let it stay as it is and not ruin anything? How old is your daughter? 27. Have you kept your ex-husband's last name? Yes. So, and your daughter's, she's old enough to understand. Okay. No, you only get married if you want to get married, okay? Okay. Don't let your daughter push you into it because, you know, sometimes marriage messes up just the boo thing. <laughs> yeah. now, are you living back together again? No, but we spin, you know, backwards and forth. Don't mess with it. It's not broken. That's right. Okay, good for you. All right. How are you doing? Hi, Wendy. My name is Virginia. How you doing? Hi, Virginia. So my husband and I recently had to get together at our house. We had a lot of friends there. And during dinner, I noticed that one of my best friend's boyfriends received a text message from a female. I don't know who the female was, but recently my friend did voice her concerns about him cheating on her. Do I tell her? No. Don't, right? Because I don't know who they are. Because, first of all, just because he received a text from a female doesn't mean that it was, you know, the next woman. It could have been something innocent. But even if it wasn't innocent, it's just easier to just stay out of grown people's business. Okay. 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 Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. Is time for another? Happy to be Wendy. How do you do? <laughs> My name is Karen. Hi, Karen. My boyfriend and I love to go out to go dancing. Uh -huh. But every once in a while, a gentleman will come over and ask me to dance. And I don't see anything wrong with that. But it seems to make my boyfriend a little bit uncomfortable. My question is, what should I say to my boyfriend to make him feel comfortable about me going dancing with another person? I... <laughs> I'm sorry, dancing is not what it used to be when people were civilized. Dancing right now is sex with your clothes on, at least, <laughs> at least where I'm from. And, and I, don't, I don't mean to be a cornball, because I'm not corny, but I'm very aware I don't think it's proper for a woman who's taken to dance with another man. Because men don't know how to keep their hands to themselves. Women are backing our thing up on them. <laughs> You, you, know, you know what I mean? Yes. yes. I mean, I mean, even if even if you a man takes you and he dances with you like this, it's still close. Your body parts are rubbing. Oh boy. You, you, you know what I mean? Yes. It's a sexual. It's a sexual act yeah. these days. I'm sorry. Oh. No dancing with another man. Thank you. You're very welcome. More ask Wendy is next. Want to be my next co-host? Okay, good. Go to wendyshow.com, request your free tickets, and be a part of my studio audience. Make sure you dress to impress. I can't wait to see you. We're back with more Ask Wendy. All right, um, except for you. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? My name is Jasmine. How you doing? Hi, Jasmine. I've been seeing this guy for two months, nothing serious. And recently, he booked the trip to Miami. And I'm like, well, hold on, we're just friends. Now, it's a red flag, should I cut him off? Where he's gonna kill you and stuff you in the trunk of the rental car. <laughs> but I didn't tell him he surprised me. And okay. I thought it was a big surprise. Jazz, have you had sex with him? No. What? Nothing, I'm just, that's why I'm like, it caught me off guard. Wait, and, and not that you should be having sex with him, but I'm just saying all these things, no. And, and when is your birthday? June. You don't even know, June is months away. You don't even know if you'll be together. He That's sounds like yeah. he's got a tick. Yeah. Change your number, lock I the doors. Work with him. You work with him? Oh. How old are you? 23. Okay, that should have been the first thing that you said. Wendy, there's, all right, you, you need to have a conversation with him. And, and the conversation is not going to be something that he's going to uh, take um, lightly. With, lightly. But that's okay. You're not going to date him. He's not your boyfriend. You're right. not going to go to the movies with him. It's done. <laughs> and, you, and what you have to do is be a woman about this right. in the workplace, okay? Because he sounds like he's got something wrong with him. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. He sounds like he's the killer. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. He's Jasmine. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? I'm all set. Wow, uh, what a pistol. <laughs> uh, I took my daughter to get a manicure, and she wanted this bright red color. And when I told her no, she basically gave me the dirtiest look, and she rolled her eyes, and I froze. I was so intimidated. At I didn't four? Want... Yes, at four. <laughs> I was intimidated. I couldn't believe it. What do I do? What should I do? Are you a single mom? Yes. Okay. Um, do you believe in spankings? I do. 
<laughs> and you get home. <laughs> and yeah. when, when stuff like, and wait, so she said, she, it's not just that she was disrespectful, because that's bad enough. She did this in the nail salon. Yeah, yes. And so all the other women are looking yeah. at you like, so what are you going to do, Lisette? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, how long ago did this happen? Uh, last week. Last week. Okay, it's a little late to do anything yeah. about it now, but the next time something like that happens in public, you grab her by her upper arm. <laughs> And you take her right back out to the, like, manicure, done. Uh, and you wait until you get home, because somebody will call the cops on you. <laughs> and then you wear her little yes. behind out. Yes. Okay? Yes. And you let her know why you're beating her, <laughs> and that you are never to be disrespected again. You are her mother. <laughs> Who's that? Is next. that we call Who's That? Or as they would say in the streets, Who Did? <laughs> Let's meet our player. What's your name? Where are you from? My name's Rosalyn, and I'm from New Jersey. How you doing? How you doing, Rosalyn? Do you work? I am a retired school teacher. Very nice. Yes. All right, Rosalyn, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a picture of a celebrity, okay. and our co-hosts are not going to help you, and then you're going to try to figure out who the celebrity is, and then okay. I have a nice prize for you, oh. okay? Um, here's the photo. Who's that? Oh. Who's oh. that? Right. If you need a hint, I can give you one. All right, I'll take the hint. Okay. Um, she's a Washington fixer who's having an affair with the president. Um, um, uh, um, Kerry Washington! Yay! Yay! This is what you get. You're going to get something that I absolutely love. This is the Dyson handheld cordless vacuum. My husband's going to love I've got three of them. <laughs> I love these. Thank you for playing with us. <laughs> I want to thank Sandra Bernhardt. I love when she stops by. Isn't she irreverent and raw and real? <laughs> love it. Also, you great people, my co-host, my studio audience, they come from far and wide while this couple right here just commuted from the lovely Upper West Side of Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow, the one and only Monique stops by. Plus, People Magazine is here to reveal their picks for the world's most beautiful people. And we kick off our Wendy's Spring Cha-Ching. I love you for watching today. And I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye-bye.